Is Boys in the Hood a blueprint for creators? Will analog grow in strength as OTT grows stronger? Is the agency model, as we once knew it, dead? We'll look at these topics and more at the intersection of business and culture, Disruptive FM. Let's do this. It's Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider, with your host, Jeffrey Colon. Okay, here we go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Disruptive FM, episode 43 for the week ending Friday, May the 3rd. I'm Jeffrey Colon, and I'll be your guide for the next 15 minutes or so as we look at some new developments in marketing, tech, media, and popular culture. Here we go. Here are this week's trending topics. Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood director John Singleton suffered a stroke this past week, which led to his passing on April 29th. What Singleton taught so many of us in the creator world is something we should use his untimely death to reinforce. Real-time creation. You see, Boys is a culturally significant film due to its subject matter, but it is also significant because of the fact Singleton shot the film in real-time sequence. That's right, from beginning to end as you see it is how he shot it. This means that as the film goes on, it got stronger, mainly because Singleton was gaining his foothold as a director. The system used... To produce boys is one many directors don't do anymore due to post editing, changes in storytelling, scenes where shoots have to take place, etc. But if there's one thing we can really take away from this film, it's that Singleton had a vision. He executed upon it masterfully and ended up being the youngest and first black director to ever be nominated for an Academy Award. This is inspiration we should all rally behind. Rest in peace. Trending Topics on DFM. Analog Awakens. As TV viewing rates on the big networks stagnate, advertising is trying to find other areas to go where it will resonate. For years, the discussion was around the fact TV advertising would eventually flow to all digital dollars. And while digital has exploded, so has something else nobody really expected. Analog advertising in the form of billboards. In terms of traditional advertising, out-of-home billboard advertising has grown year over year and has no signs of stopping. And why would it? Big brands love it. It delivers impressions. And while they still advertise heavily on TV, they want to be in places where they can be seen that isn't filtered by algorithms, ad blockers, or decreasing viewership. And thus, the growth of billboards continues to explode. Why this is such a big deal is for the last decade, the promise of digital was all around the fact that it could be more impactful for a brand and be cheaper. None of this has been proven to be true. And if anything, big brands still love analog advertising. And why shouldn't they? If anything, analog impressions can still be massive And mass replication is what big brands love. For the time being, being a big brand means spending money on analog and digital. But it wasn't supposed to be this way. Trending Topics on DFM. Agency Collision. Creative agencies are being bought by the bucket loads as of late. Why is that? I thought, if anything, the rise of digital would be the end of the creative agency as we knew it. And yet about a month ago, Accenture Interactive forked over a big wad of cash for independent creative shop Droga 5. What gives? I'll tell you. In a world where media buying is more programmatic with razor-thin earnings, creative is still something you can slap a rate on five times and make some big money in the process. And thus, this is where we are in the year 2019. Creative shops are roaring back. To some people, they never really went away. But let's not take my word for it. We turn to our contributor at large, Cheryl Barbie, 
for insight into this growing phenomenon. Cheryl joined us earlier this week via Skype. Here's a bit of that conversation. It's such an interesting time. I mean, I think it's been interesting for at least the last decade. I remember Ogilvy and ad agencies at that time were trying to compete with consultancies by building their own consulting groups. They had poached previous consultants and MBA grads to become part of the ad agency world, thinking that that would give them the leg up. Now we're seeing the reverse with consultancies poaching creatives. What I also think is interesting is beyond those two, the competitive landscape for agencies has gotten incredibly diverse. You're seeing companies like New York Times, Hulu, NBC, starting to branch off into ads that are built into their content, to their original content. They're using their streaming properties now to be ad platforms. The competition is more diverse than ever before, especially for agencies. But what's really interesting about what you see those big consultancies doing is they are acquiring, and that does generate PR, and PR certainly gets your foot in the door, gets you that seat at the table with the CMO, starts the conversation. But when you scratch beneath the surface of the PR, there's quite a lot of operational and cultural challenges I don't think have been worked out and that actually make me not as bullish as some people might be for the moves the consultancies are making. So to deconstruct that a bit, what I find consultancies typically are doing when they acquire agencies is to take the same approach that they took to mergers and acquisitions in the 90s. So you buy companies in distress and you break them apart for their parts and basically try and make a profit off of their parts. So you see consultancies buying lots and lots of creative agencies and basically treating the resources in those agencies, the people, as component parts. Oftentimes the leadership of those agencies end up being let go or not really being able to lead the agency like they had before or willingly bowing out. As I remember one consultant telling me before, you cut the head off. So the heads of the agencies get cut off. And then what happens is you end up having a bubble of small agencies competing with each other for that consultancy's business. So they may all technically be in this, under the same tent, but it's very difficult for one agency to the other to know who gets the opportunity at the creative work. That was our contributor at large, Cheryl Barbie, talking about the recent acquisition of Droga 5 by Accenture Interactive and basically the roaring back of the creative agency as an asset. To hear my full-length interview with Cheryl, check out our DFM bonus round on our Disruptive FM YouTube channel. You're listening to Disruptive FM with Jeffrey Colon. Now, here comes the music. Here comes the music. Here comes the music. Here comes the music. It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Disruptive FM. And you can connect with me personally on Twitter and Instagram at DJ G-E-O-F-F-E. Big shout out to our sponsors, Microsoft Advertising and Branding Strategy Insider. For more in-depth analysis of some of the topics we're talking about here, Visit MicrosoftAdvertising.ai and BrandingStrategyInsider.com. DFM is also sponsored by Iographer. Help you to create better video. Iographer makes accessories for your mobile devices so you can make professional quality videos. Check out all their great products at Iographer.com. In the background, that's new music from Oliver Dollar and a track called Jam Hot. It is from the full-length album Another Day, Another Dollar, out now from the Classic Music Company. You can listen to the whole track on Spotify. We'll include a link in the description for this episode. And now, DFM presents... (laughs) Do you even read, bro? It's called reading. Top to bottom, left to right. Group words together as a sentence. Book reviews for disruptive minds. I'm heading to Germany while you're listening to this. 
to speak at an event with author Noah Yuval Harari. Of course, he's the author of the bestsellers Species and Homo Do, if you didn't know. But it's not Harari we want to speak about here. Instead, Joseph Stiglitz has a book out that should keep a lot of big tech companies up at night. It's entitled People, Power, and Profits, Progressive Capitalism for an Age of Discontent. Here's our take. Stiglitz identifies the true sources of wealth and of increases in standards of living based on learning, advances in science and technology, and the rule of law. He shows that the assault on the judiciary, universities, and the media undermines the very institutions that have long been the foundation of America's economic might and its democracy. Helpless though we may feel today, we are far from powerless. In fact, the economic solutions are often quite clear. We need to exploit the benefits of markets while taming their excesses, making sure that markets work for us, the U.S. citizens, and not the other way around. If enough citizens rally behind the agenda for change outlined in this book, it may not be too late to create a progressive capitalism that will create a shared prosperity. Stiglitz shows how a middle-class life can once again be attainable by all. Okay, we like to keep an eye on the news and look for stories just starting to make waves. It's a segment we call On the Radar. Here's what's on our radar. Here's what's on our radar. Number one. Developers are converting mall spaces into offices to generate stable revenues and foot traffic for the remaining stores. One example is the Los Angeles West Side Pavilion Mall, which is being repurposed into a $410 million Google complex. As brick-and-mortar retailers evolve to address changing consumer demands, more office spaces and malls could help alleviate the retail apocalypse, which has already claimed almost 6,000 stores this year alone. Number two. The plant-based protein trend is growing more rapidly than most people anticipated. Just this week, Beyond Meat, which makes meatless alternatives to beef, pork, and poultry, went public. Its main competitor, Impossible Foods, reported that demand is so high, it's causing a shortage. Burger King announced plans to roll out an Impossible Burger nationally, and Ikea said it's developing a new meatless meatball designed to taste like animal meat. Demand for plant-based Meat alternatives is being fueled by consumers looking to make their diets healthier and reduce their impact on the environment. And there's clearly room for growth. The question is, how much? Number three. There are two kinds of peak creativity, and they reach full bloom at different times in a person's life, according to research from the University of Chicago and Ohio State University. There are the conceptual innovators among us, those who are typically younger, under the age of 30, upstarts who set their sights on challenging conventions with fresh ideas, the Picassos of the world. And then there are experimental innovators who use their deep experiences to test out new ideas and form unexpected connections over time. These innovators are usually over the age of 50. Uh, the Cezans of the world, so to speak. Anyhow, it gives us hope here at DFM that we still are creative. Okay, that will do it for another weekly dose of DFM number 43. As always, thanks for checking us out. We would love it if you would rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And please tell a friend. We're on all your major podcast services, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and SoundCloud. Once again, the socials, Twitter and Instagram, at DisruptiveFM is the handle. And read more in-depth content via our three sponsors, MicrosoftAdvertising.ai, BrandingStrategyInsider.com, and Iographer.com. Next week... We got some special guests cooking up from the OMR Festival in Hamburg, Germany. Until then, for everyone here at DFM, have a great week. I'm Jeffrey Colon. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Colon. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. 